In the previous videos, I mentioned important sampling, and I showed that important sampling only lets us calculate quantities of interest, like a normalizing constant, the mean, etc. But unlike rejection sampling, we don't actually end up with a sample from the distribution we wanted. So in this video, uh, I will show you how you, this can be achieved using sampling importance resampling, or SIR. And first I'll explain the technique. Uh, I'll show you how to obtain a sample from f of x and prove why the technique is correct, or at least try to give you some intuition into it. And then I will also show you how, to, how it's easy to move from f of x, uh, a current distribution, to a sample from another distribution quite easily using the SIR algorithm. And finally, I will show an example in R. OK, so what is sampling importance resampling? Um, remember that in importance sampling, we use the trick that in order to calculate f of x, this is equal to f of x divided by g of x times g of x, where uh, g of x is where g of x is a proposed distribution, something that is a distribution which is easy for us to calculate. And in important sampling, we sample from this easy distribution and then calculate this thing over here. So what the SIR algorithm says is take these things and consider them as weights. So weights of i is f x of i divided by g f x of i when x i was drawn or sampled from the distribution g. Now, once you calculated these weights, uh, the SIR algorithm tells you to normalize them. So we can consider q of i to be w of i divided by the sum of all w of i. Now take the sample that you drew and resample from it according to these uh, probabilities. So we are resampling from the sample that we already obtained. So let's say we obtain a vector, yeah, of x1, x2, all the way to some xn. Yeah, and for each, uh, we have a chance to take x1 according to w1 divided by the sum of all w's. And some xi, we have the chance to draw it wi divided by the sum of wi. And what SIR tells us is that the new sample that we get, this new, let's call them x tilde i's, then the new sample that we get will be from the distribution of the normalized f of x. So this is quite cool. We only sample from some easy distribution, but after going through all the process, after calculating the weights, normalizing them, and then resampling from the sample that we had before, we end up with a sample of the desired distribution. And this sample will be from the normalized desired distribution. So why is it so? Well, let's first consider the CDF of F. So this is the CDF of F. And remember, F of X is still not, doesn't have to be normalized, yeah? So this will be the integral of F of X dx from, let's say, the support of X is the entire real line. So this will be until a, and since f of x is not normalized, we have to normalize this. OK, we can use the important sampling trick. And another thing we can do is instead of writing this as an integral from minus infinity to a, 
we can write this as an integral from minus infinity to infinity. Time, time the indicator function for minus infinity till a. Yeah, and what this means is this function is 1 from minus infinity to a and 0 elsewhere. Now this is, uh, we can look at this also as the expected value, the mean, with respect to some distribution g of f of x divided by g of x times the indicator function. This is the same. Okay, so let's call this thing over here, instead of f of x divided by g of x, wi of x. And the i means we are going to sample from g. So x of i will be fr sample from g. And then this can be approximated by the sample average. Now these two cancel out, and we can also write this as the sum of wix divided by the sum of wix times some indicator function of x. But we also said that this thing, we, can, we call this q of i. So this is equal to the sum of q of i of x times the indicator function. And since q of i, this is a valid uh, distribution, the sum of all q of i's will be 1. So this is actually a distribution of the CDF. This is actually equal to the CDF that x tilde will i will be less or equal to a. So this is actually the CDF of q. Or you can think of it the CDF of the SIR output. We can also do this the other way around. We could have started from the CDF of the SIR, uh, which are these q's values that we calculated, and do the other way around and show that this is actually, we end up with the CDF of f of x of our desired uh, distribution. So this is why the SIR algorithm works. Now I want to move to the second part, which is to show how you can move from one distribution to another distribution. So why is this useful? In Bayesian statistics, the f of x is the posterior. And sometimes you want to change your assumption either about the prior or about the likelihood. So you could have that your first posterior, f of x, is um, proportional to some likelihood times some prior. And, your, and if you want to change the prior, let's say, then you will have a new uh, posterior, let's call it f star of x, and this will be proportional to L2, the li another likelihood, maybe you also change the likelihood, uh, and another uh, prior. And from these two equations, you can see that uh, the new posterior is proportional to, sorry,
And so what we can do is do the exact same thing we did before. We can say this is uh, some easy distribution. This is some proposed distribution. Why is this now easy? Well, because we know the normalizing constant. We can calculate it. Uh, we also have a, a way to sample from it, either from rejection, either by rejection sampling or even through the SIR uh, algorithm. So we can actually already have a sample from f of x, and then we can treat this thing over here as the new weights. This is like our new f of x divided by g of x, yeah? Or in this case, f star of x divided by f of x. And we can just do the whole process of either finding the normalizing constant or sample from the new posterior quite easily. Okay, so let's see this in R. Here we sample from some easy distribution. Let's say here the exponential distribution. We can see how it looks like. And now let's suppose that our desired distribution, unnormalized, is f of, is chi square with five degrees of freedom. And I multiply this by five on purpose so that it will be considered unnormalized. And now we take we calculate the PDF of the proposed distribution. And now we calculate f of x divided by g of x. We calculate their PDFs and we save this as weights. And now we calculate the normalized weights, which are the weights divided by the sum of the weights. And now we sample from our original sample and according to the probabilities of the weights, because our new weights, our normalized weights, can be thought of as probabilities. And if we do this, I want to show you the two graphs side by side. Here we have a, an actual sample from chi-square with five degrees of freedom. And he, here we have the sampling importance with sampling algorithm. And you can see they are quite similar to each other. Now, let's say we wanted to move from a chi-square distribution that we already have, we have this from the SIR algorithm, and we wanted to move to a new distribution, let's say an F distribution with 5 and 25 degrees of freedom. So we calculate the PDF of our new sample, and we calculate the PDF of our uh, desired distribution from the sample as well. We calculate the new weights. Um, we, in addition, uh, normalize the weights. And again, we sample from the new sample according to the new weights. And you can see that again, the SIR algorithm gives a very good uh, sample compared to the actual sampling from the actual distribution. Now here I wrote that the mean should be approximately one, and this is because what we do here is we actually calculate um, the normalizing constant of f of 2, but f of 2 is already normalized. It's just the regular f distribution. So this is why the mean should be 1. And that's it. This is the SIR algorithm. You can use it to uh, obtain a sample from some desired distribution using important sampling. And you can also use it to quickly move from uh, some distribution to another, let's say in the case where you change your priors or you want to ch check the sensitivity of your posterior to changes in the priors or something like this. See you in the next video.